Good morning. Welcome to House of God and Gate of Heaven. I want to give a special welcoming to all those who are joining us for the first time. Welcome and welcome to all those who are our members that are faithful. We love you. Good to have you with us this morning. Um, let's begin with some prayer. Lord, thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to do something mighty, Lord. We want to worship you. We want to praise you, God, with a heart that is full of gratitude, Lord, this morning for everything that you are and all that you do, God. We're so appreciative, Lord. So we love you, God. We pray that your spirit be in this place. We welcome you. And I pray, Father, that you would go ahead and do whatever you need to do, Lord, because it's going to be good, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Who is ready to worship Jesus? Woo! Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Let's just wake up a little bit. Woo! Amen. I heard y'all. Y'all didn't say nothing. Go ahead. Let's go. For the people that didn't say anything online. Who's ready to worship Jesus? Woo! Amen. Come on, put those hands together.
for your deliverance. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, because I'm not the same, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because I'm loose to honor you and to serve you. Hallelujah. Oh,
Hallelujah. There is a great anointing in the house. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a great anointing of healing in the house. Who believes that today? Amen. Hallelujah. I feel like God is healing some people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh man, I feel like God is going to do something powerful today. Amen? Who believes Amen. that? Amen. Today we're going to do communion. It's the beginning of the month, and um, we normally do communion. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do it now or afterwards. Afterwards. Um, it's crazy that this is the last month of the year. This year has gone by like fast. fast, like very fast. But God is in control, amen? amen? And we believe that God is doing things in our lives and God is doing miracles, amen? I feel like there's a miracle that just sprouted out today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God healed me of my knee pain today. Amen. Hallelujah. Just in that worship. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Jesus. 
Let me tell you, this week has been a tough week for me. And it's been a tough week even to bring this message today. All week it's been like, I've been with a lot of work and a lot of stuff going on in my life. And I've been praying and praying and the Lord hasn't spoke to me. And I was like, Lord, you need to speak to me because I need to bring a word. And I know my wife will bring a word in no time, but I, I, need, I need time to, you know. And it's been tough, so, but I got, I got it yesterday in the morning. I, I'm like, I'm not even going to make a video today. I'm just going to get in because I had, to, I had to work yesterday. So I said, well, I'm going to wake up early and get into, the, into his word. And Lord, you speak to me and the Lord spoke to me. So that means today's word is going to be good. Very good. <laughs> Amen. It's fresh out of the oven. It's going to be very good. Hallelujah. So today what I want to talk about is what has made me successful in life. Amen? You might say, well, you know, what are you talking about? Are you successful? Yeah, I'm successful. I'm successful in everything that I do. If I put this in front, I'm successful. Amen? If I put this, what I'm going to give you today in front of everything that I do, I am super successful. Amen. Who wants to be successful? Amen. Who wants to know how to be successful? Amen. Hallelujah. So, I guess you could title this message, You Want Success in Life? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for this word, Lord, that this word will go and touch somebody's life today, Father God. That somebody could apply this word in their lives, Father God, and be radically changed, Father God, and go from, from nothing to what you have for them, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Woo. So how are we going to be successful in life? It's simple. It's the word of God. <laughs> it's the word. The word. There's success in the word of God. Hallelujah. God's word could make you successful and powerful. Amen. And I'm going to bring some points like I normally do. And a whole lot of scripture. I was thinking about something this week. I was like, man, some people just bring one scripture, and with that scripture, they bring a whole message. I, I cannot do that. I'm going to try to do that next week. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, because the word is inside of me that I'm st I start writing down stuff, and, and like different scriptures start popping in my mind, and I'm like, well, I, this is part of it, this is part of it, and this is part of it, so I can't just keep one scripture going, and that's it. So uh, let's see what happens. Hallelujah. So I'm going to bring some point. Point number one. The word of God stands firm in the heavens. Hallelujah. Psalms 119. Verse 89. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Firm. So God's word is firm. I got to know. Isaiah 48. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Imagine if God's Word stands firm in the heavens. Imagine what God's word does here on earth. Mm, Think about it. Think about that for a second. If it stands firm in the heavens, imagine what it does here on earth. When you're feeling a little wobbly, you know what I mean? And your faith gets a little wobbly. What, what do you do? You get in God's word and you stand firm. Hallelujah. Do you feel like there's power in God's word? Yes. I know because I do. Number two. It's not stagnant or inactive. It's dynamic and powerful. <laughs> it's not stagnant or inactive. It's dynamic and powerful. 
Yeah, I got. I went back and got some notes from from some stuff that I had. I was like, man, this stuff is good. I'm gonna bring this here. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. This verse right here has three parts. Hallelujah. Check it out. It says, for the word of God is alive and active. That means that there is life in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Then it says, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide the soul and the spirit, joint and marrow. Why would you want to divide the soul and the spirit? I got this from a study that I did one time. It says, the soul is the essence of humanity. It is who we are. The spirit is the aspect of humanity that connects us with God. Amen. So I could say that when I am in the Word and the Word comes alive in me, the Word separates me from who I am and connects me to God. Wow. Amen. Amen? Did you guys understand that? Yes. You don't want me to repeat that again? Yes. <laughs> so, the, the Scripture says that it divides the soul and the spirit. The soul is the essence of humanity. So that's who we are. That's our soul. The spirit is the aspect of humanity that comes, that connects us with God. Amen. Our spirit is the one we connect with God. So we could say that when I'm in God's word and the word comes alive in me, because I said the word comes alive in me, the word separates me from who I am and connects me with God. And then that verse finishes by saying it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. What does that mean? It brings conviction to us. Mm. Hallelujah. Just with that right there, just with that scripture right there, just with, with what I just gave you right now, you got success. If you follow that, that's it. You're successful in life. Amen. You need nothing else. What do you think? Does the word of God have power? The word of God will accomplish great things. It has done for me. I have so much that I don't even know what to do with it. And, I, and I'm not talking about financial stuff. I have life. I have family. I have friends. I have everything that I need. I have Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God has shown me how to be a man. Has shown me how to be a father. Has shown me how to be a pastor. Has shown me how to be a leader. Has shown me how to be a hard worker. The word of God is made me successful. I have grown in the Lord because of the word of God. Am I making any sense today? Yes. Yes. Amen. Isaiah 55 11 says. So is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for, for which I sent it. Listen to what my Bible study says. The power and effect of God's word will never be canceled or become void. His word will always accomplish its purpose by bringing either spiritual life to those who receive it or judgment to those who reject it. Mm -hmm. Whew. I'm going to read that again. The power and effect of God's word will never be canceled or become void. His word will always accomplish its purpose by bringing either spiritual life to those who receive it or judgment to those who reject it. 
Number three. Woo. Could I get my water there? You are great. Woo. Hallelujah. There's miracles in the house. Amen. There's miracles in the house. Who needs a miracle today? Hallelujah. The word of God has sustained creation. <laughs> That's number three. <laughs> the word has power to sustain creation. Oh, yeah. That's going to get good now. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. How, oh, man, I love Jesus. I love me some Jesus. Man, I love me some Jesus. The word has power to sustain creation. Hebrews 1.3 The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Let me read that again. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Who can see Jesus as the word sustaining all things right here in this scripture. Yes. Yes. I don't know if I do. I, I looked at him like, whoa. Yes. I can see Jesus oh. right there, boy. Look what Paul says in, in Colossians 1.17. He says, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Yes. Think about that. Together. Everything. Everything is together because of Christ. I'm not making this up. Let me tell you, this is the real deal. I'm going to read a little bit more. Watch. Verses 15 through 20. It says, the sun is the image of the invisible God. Listen to this for a second. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the first born over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things have been created through him for him. He is before all things in and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Think about this for a second. God's fullness, he had everything dwelling in Jesus. And everything came together because of Jesus. Amen. And through him... To reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or in heaven, like I said before, by making peace through his blood shed it on the cross. Jesus is the word and everything that has to do with the word is Jesus. Amen. You know where I'm going to go now. John says it right from the beginning. Verse 1 and 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. When? In the beginning. What did the other verse say? It says it said that He was there in the beginning. Amen? And in Him, He was with God in the beginning, and through Him, what? All things were made. The same thing as the other verse. Everything has to do with Jesus. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overtaken it. So this goes beyond success. This is, this is not even, success is not even nothing here. 
Let me tell you, if you got some Jesus inside of you, you it, ain't, it, it, it don't have nothing to do with success. This is powerful. Think about it. Who was Jesus? The anointed? Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and power in all heaven and earth. Everything was held together through Christ. Amen? I just read that. Everything and then what happens? He gives us the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that, that was dwelt in Him in Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power. What? Power! When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Think about that for a second. We have the power. We have the same power. We have everything that we need. The thing is that people don't want to go to the source. That's why you don't have success in your life. Look what Luke 10, 19 says. Behold, I have given unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Not some of the power of the enemy. Does it say some? Get off my knee. My knee is not going to hurt because I am healed in the name of Jesus. Right. Power of all the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Oh. There you go. 2 Peter 1 3 it says, His divine power has granted to us all things pertaining life and goodness through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. Who is he talking about? What does Philippians 4.13 say? I could do all things through, through who? Christ. Who strengthens me? In the word of God, I have success. I have liberty. I have healing. I have everything that I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My wife wanted me to preach on something else, but it didn't happen. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus. Number four. The Word of God has power to give, reveal, and to communicate new life. Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus. The Word of God has power to give, reveal, and to communicate new life. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, I'm going to go back to the same thing. 1 Peter 1.23. Listen to this. Listen to this scripture. <laughs> I found Jesus all up in this place. Yeah, baby. <laughs> it says, for you have been born again. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. First Peter 1.23. Listen, li li I'm going to repeat this again. And see what you could find in here. I, see if the Holy Spirit speaks to you like it speaks to me when I'm reading the word. Listen, it says, for you have been born again, born again. Not of perishable sea, but of imperishable. Through the living and enduring word of God. Do you see what I'm talking about? Who do you see there? Jesus. Jesus. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. You can find him in, how do, you, how do they say, in, in the soup, in la sopa. He's everywhere. He is the word of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Number five. The word of God has power to judge. Woo, hallelujah. You are great. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I feel good. I feel so good today. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, 
frequently the the prophets and the apostles they spoke words of correction, discipline, and judgment. Amen. Jesus himself said his word will condemn those who reject him. In John 12, 48, it says, There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last days. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. And we, we could see it as like the author in the book of Hebrews says that God judges the thoughts and attitudes, attitude of the heart. Amen. So in other words, those who chose to ignore God's word will one day experience it as the final word of judgment and conviction. Amen. So do not ignore God's word. Amen. Amen. Number six, the word of God releases grace. What is grace? Undeserved favor and mercy and helps from helps and the help of God so us as followers can grow in faith and communication with him. And this is one of my favorite ones. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Shut, shut. Seven. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. That's number seven? Yes. Oh. God has given us the word so we could fight with all the enemy's schemes. Amen? We could see what happened with Jesus when he was tempted by the enemy. What did he use? He used the word to defeat him. Amen? That's that's our sword. This is this is our sword. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this one verse that I love very much in Revelations. I think this is my favorite verse in Revelations. Revelations 19. Well, it's, it's a couple verses. 19 chapter 19 verse 13 through 16. <laughs> He is dressed in a robe, dripped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. <laughs> <laughs> the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen. That's me. Hallelujah. White and clean. Hallelujah. Make sure you are clean and white because if not, you ain't going to be riding with him. Amen. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which he strikes down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will thread the winepress, the fury of his wrath of the God Almighty. And on his robe, on his tie, on his thigh, he has a name written. King of King and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Woo! Jesus. Jesus. That hits right in the gut. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> what did Satan, what did Jesus tell Satan in, in, it's written. Oh. It is written. It is written. Jesus. Oh, this word is good. Good, good. It is written. You want success? The word of God is success. When you know the word, Satan can't touch you. I'm telling you. I already, I already know. It's funny because I already know what I'm going to bring next week. And what I'm going to bring next week is going to show you how the enemy will not touch you, how you can walk in victory. This is what happens when you have the word with you. Oh, no weapon from against you shall prosper. 
You're like, oh, my leg is hurting. Oh, it is written. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 and through 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them. Health to the one whole body. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. This scripture is written on the side of, of one of my, the people that I'm working at on the side of his, his shed. Jeremiah thirty seventeen. For I will, oh, my leg is hurting. What? For I will restore health to you and heal your wounds, says the Lord. No, the doctor says you have this and this and this. No, 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 no. It is written, Exodus 23, 25. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away any sickness among you. Jesus. It is written. Hallelujah. Well, you know, right now my finances are not right there. It is written, Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory. In who? In Christ Jesus. Nah, my children, my children are kind of like slacking and they, they, they've gone away from the Lord and they're not doing good right now. You know, it is written. Psalms 23. No, no, Psalms 22, verse 6. Start children off on the way of the Lord. They should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. It is written. Tell Satan today, it is written, my children, I'm going to start off in the way of the Lord, and when they get, they will not depart. Yeah. Amen. Train them, train them in the word. Hallelujah. Well, my career is not going too good right now. You know what God says? It is written. <laughs> Psalms 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. You want another one? Proverbs 16.3 Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. So everything put it in God's hands. Hallelujah. There's something for everything in the word. Yeah, the word is powerful. I'm feeling a little anxious. It is written in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. It is written. Hallelujah. Who wants to be successful in life? Amen. I got your ticket right here. It is written, Psalms 55, 22, Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Amen. Never. The word of God is the difference maker. Do you want success? Who wants success? Yes. Amen. I want success in God. Amen. Because when you have success in God, you will have success in life. Yes. I don't want success in the world. You will have success in everything when you have success with God. Amen. Do you want to get to the next level in your spiritual life? Success in God. It's the word. 
And make sure it's just not head knowledge. Oh, that's right. Because you can read the word all you want. But you need to eat the word. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through the word. And, 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 and not only that, you need to apply the word in your life. So whatever the word says to do, do it. do it. Just do it. And you will have success in everything that you do in life. Amen? And that's it. That's all I got for you. Thank you, Jesus. That real good. That's all you need in life. You want to be successful? That's all you need. Amen? Amen. So we're going to have communion now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful service, Lord. We thank you for your word that brings light and life into us, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whew. Man, look at that. I know the word so good, I find the scriptures right away already. His glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whew, Jesus. That was good. That was good. <laughs> I told you it was going to be good. I know. When God, when God starts speaking, He speaks. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, crackers. This we do it symbolically. Amen. Knowing that we do this in remembrance of what he did for us on the cross. The blood, the sacrifice that he that he did, the broken body, the lashes that were on his back. He did it for us. For that imperishable. Like what I was reading earlier, Jesus did this for us. He did this for us. And today we do this because the word says we do this in remembrance of him. And, and we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat of the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup, is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink in remembrance of you of me let us drink so for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes thank you father thank you for this time lord thank you that you allow us to do this father god in remembrance of you father god knowing father god that one day you will be here father god and probably we won't have to do this anymore because we were going to be with you lord god and we thank you for your blood for your body for your stripes father god for what you did for us lord as sinners father god not deserving father god what you have given us father god but you have given us like what I preach today, success in the word, Father God. Bless your people, Lord. Bless those that are out there, Father God. Those that need you today, I pray that they will cry out to you, Father. Like I did so many years ago, and you came and rescued me, Father God. Rescue those that need rescuing. If you need rescuing today, ask the Lord to rescue you. Come to him. Say, forgive me, Lord, for my sins. I am a sinner. Like I did that. I said, I am a sinner. I am unworthy. But you forgive me, Lord. And he forgave me. Give me new life. 
write my name, say that to him today, write my name in the book of life. Because I want to be your son and I want to follow you from this day forward. Follow Jesus from this day forward and you will have success in your life. Guaranteed. Amen. God bless you. Until next week. May the Lord blessing and countenance be upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.